Melanie here with Eyes on the Game. I'm here at Ruka being joined by Coach Jason Perillo. Always good to see you. I, I feel like it's a yearly reunion here, right? Oh, at least once a year. A lot going on for you, as always. Um, first off, this past weekend was the Bellator fight. What did you think of that? Wow. Yeah, it, it, there were some good fights, weren't there? There were some upsets, obviously. You got a... Uh, you know, I, I was really keeping an eye on Aaron Pico. He's a kid that he pops in here. Um, you know, your Ruka sponsors Aaron, and uh, I know he's one of the, he's, if not the best uh, prospect out there. He fell short in the fight, unfortunately. Um, go ahead. Yeah, what did you think of that stoppage and, and how he uh, dropped Henry, and then Henry was able to recover from that and, and the mistakes that Aaron made? Yeah, I mean, well, you know, Henry obviously has a lot of experience. He's been in some dog fights himself. He's been in there with just really high level competition. You know, Pico, Pico could have been e very easily the highest level of competition that he's been in there with. But unfortunately, you know, Pico's got a, you know, a little lack of experience. You know, he, you know he's high level in, 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 in a lot of areas, you know, but, you know, experience is something that has to be, you have to go through it. You know, you got you, you got you got to get the experience. You got to get in there with the right fights. And uh, this guy was very beatable for Pico. Pico it was showing that he was going to beat him. But again, I think experience came into play. I think he was rushing in a little bit and, you know, got caught in there. Now, in the main event, Ryan Bader became the first two-division champion for Bellator and his uh, very quick stoppage, I believe, 35 seconds over Fedor. What did you think of that? Did it surprise you at all? You know, at this point, you know, of, of my career, I guess you can call it a career, um, nothing surprises me. Nothing at all. You know, it, it doesn't surprise me a bit. Um, you know, anything can happen in there. You got those little gloves and you got two big guys like that with heavy hands. You know, the, whoever lands first sometimes is going to win in that situation. So, I mean, it did surprise me. Um, but, you know, God bless. Good for uh, Ryan Bader. Yeah. And you had a fighter who fought, right, Ian, yep. as well? Ian Butler. Ian yeah. Butler fell short. You know, he's a, he, he's... You know, he's plugging away. He just walked in the gym right now. You know, he's a guy that's a fighter and he loves a fight. So he's going to keep on going out there and uh, trying to get some wins. So I help the kid out as much as I can. Now, um, after Bellator, so Tito Ortiz was there and he tweeted about kind of wanting to make a return and him and Chael kind of going back and forth again and then him wanting Ryan Bader. What do you think of like Tito, you know, just retiring and then wants to fight again? And, and what, I mean, do you think he's gonna fight forever? Yeah, well, you know what? I, I guess I feel that as much as anybody, if not more. I mean, because, you know, the, for the last couple, few, few fights now, we're like, ah, we're riding off in the sunset with the yeah. victory and, 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 and walking off on uh, his own terms. But Tito's a fighter. It's what he loves to do, you know, and, and, and uh, he believes in himself. So, you know, he, 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 he looked, you know, probably the best I've ever seen him, you know, his last yes. fight with Chuck. And, and, and I know people had a lot of, lot of uh, criticisms on Chuck, but, you know, Chuck was there and Chuck came to fight. And, you know, Chuck has a little bit of a mental edge on Tito because of the times he knocked him out. So, uh, you know, Tito had to push through a lot mentally, not just physically, but mentally to get up for that fight and, 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 and put it on Chuck the way he did. So, you know, I was really proud of him for that fight. And, and I love that being his retirement fight. But now if he comes out and wants to do it again, that's what we do. You know what I mean? That's what I, you know, I'm his coach, so I'm going to be there for him. Has he started training already or not yet? Yeah, I think he's trained a little bit. Tito stays right. If he knows that he's fighting, he's going to be in the gym. You know, he's going to be in the gym. He's going to, he, he's going to you know, Tito's a, a, an athlete. He's a, prof he's a real pro, you know, so he, he he's not going to say something unless he's getting ready for it. Now, last week, uh, it was Adrian Broner and Manny Pacquiao, um, but I did see the former longtime uh, champion, Chris Cyborg. She was there. I got to talk to her and catch up for a few minutes. Um, and, you know, she seemed to be in great spirits how she handled that fight, you know, afterwards uh, against Amanda Nunes. Just a class act all around. Uh, what did you think of that fight? Well, that's exactly what I, uh, I've had to say about that fight. Unfortunately, <clears throat> unfortunately, we lose a fight, yeah. you know, it, it, and that does happen. Like I said, nothing surprises you in this game. Anything can happen out there. You know, you win some, you lose some. But uh, I don't think uh, the public or the fans or, or the people in the MMA world would really, they finally get to see Chris Cyborg's personality. You yeah. finally get to see who she is and what she's all about. You know, it, it's hard to see what somebody's all about when they're always dominating, they're always winning. They can come off like the sweetest person in the world, 
but at the same time, you don't really know if that's them. You know, you don't know if they're genuine. You don't know if they're just acting nice because they're kicking everybody's ass and, you know, they, they can act however they want. But at the end of the day, you see her true personality. You see her true spirit. You see how classy she is and, and the integrity she has. So, you know, at the end of the day, Ed, you know, it's, it's, there's a blessing in disguise. I mean, there's a lot of cliche sayings when you lose a fight, but it, there's a reason why the sayings are said. And, uh, you know, I believe uh, there's a lot of good that's going to come out of that. You know, if she keeps plugging away forward, like I know she will, and uh, goes out and redeems herself. Who do you think should be next for her if that rematch with Amanda Nunes doesn't happen yet? Well, whoever. I mean, you know, she can fight, you know, Megan or, or Kat Zingano. I'd like to see Meg because Meg, Megan's a true, uh, true 145-pounder, and she just beat Kat, you know, and we know Kat beat Amanda, so, you know, there's a fight there as well. Um I would like to see that fight with Megan Anderson. Um, hey, whoever, really. I mean, she's got to, you know, she's come so far in her career and, you know, she fell short for the first time in so long that, uh, you know, she's got to be willing to bounce back and fight anybody they put in front of her. Now, if she does get that rematch, uh, what would you guys do differently going into it? Well, you know, I, I think we, I think ultimately we'd end up tightening up ship a little bit more. You know, it's she's she's got the experience. Of, she's got the experience to be the champ. She's got the experience of of all the hoopla and all the bullshit that comes along with it. You know, it it, it and now with falling short in this fight, she's going to probably tuck. You know, hopefully, you know, as we have conversation, she'll tuck back and and kind of fuck, focus on what's most important. That's fighting. You know, and, and yes, she's always been focused on, on fighting, but there's a, she's also being, you're, you're champ, you're getting pulled a lot of different directions. I see with all of them, you know, now you're, you know, well, you, you, do, you got a lot of different sponsorships, you got a lot of different obligations, you got, you got cameras on you 24 hours a day. You know, it's, it, it's a big mind fuck, you know, it, it, it takes your mind away from what's the important part, how you got there, and, and the way you got there was focusing on fighting, getting in shape, staying grounded and just plugging away, you know. Cyborg always stays grounded, you know what I mean. But did she have, you know, everybody in the in the world coming at her? Of course, everybody does. You know, BJ did. You know, uh, Bisbing did. You know, they, they they get that. You know, and, and, and being a champion, you, you draw a lot of attention. Everybody wants to be involved and around a champion. So you know, it starts saturating you and, and kind of takes away from you. You know what I mean. So I think the focus is going to be a little different when she comes back. You know, and starts training to fight again. Yeah, and. I know a lot of her fans, and we all are looking forward to her return, um, but someone else that fought on that card, BJ Penn, uh, what did you think of his fight against Ryan Hall? Well, you know, I, I actually didn't see the whole fight, and I haven't even gone back to watch. I watched the, I watched the submission, um, but from what everybody says, and the, it, it, from what people were saying, he was looking pretty good, actually, you know, yeah. and, and, and he was carrying himself well, and he was reacting well, you know, uh, that Ryan Hall's a tricky dude, and, and you know, and I think BJ also, I mean, if you study Ryan Hall, you know that's what he's going to come after yeah. you with. And I think BJ was prepared for it. It just, you know, it's like getting caught, I guess, with a punch. You know, he got mm -hmm. caught, and, uh, and that's a fight game again. You know, that's BJ Penn, too. He loves to get in there. So, you know, I, don't be surprised if he tries to get in there again. <laughs> I was just going to ask I you, because I know uh, you, you always say he's unpredictable as well. Like, he may pop up. Or pop in here at the gym and he then leave. In Saturday night, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, he just wow. popped He's in. He's back the, training? No, he popped oh. in Saturday night and went back to Hawaii. He came in from, from Canada, popped in for the night and left. Um, yeah, that's BJ. Um, we're really good friends. You know, yeah. he's one of my best friends in the whole world, really. And, uh, you know, so, but it still doesn't mean I can predict what he's going to do sure. because, you know, for this last fight, I thought he was going to be training out here, for God's sakes. <laughs> was it last minute he decided not to, or? Yeah, was it? Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, no, he went out to Brazil two, yeah. you know, two months, two and a half months maybe for his fight. So it wasn't, it was last minute, you know what I mean? He went out there, you know, but we, but we were planning on getting together and doing something out there. But I think also, you know, with Ryan Hull's, you know, jujitsu experience, I I think he wanted to go, you know, to Novo Yao and, and, and work, uh, you know, go back back, at, back to his foundation. He started out, you know, in jujitsu and getting his black belt from Andre Pedaneris, you know, over at Novo Yao. So, you know, it, 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 it's, it, it's, it's BJ. BJ is going to do what he wants to do and kind of, you know, think the way he's going to think. So at the end of the day, like I said, is he going to fight again? You know as well as I do, Helen Yee. Time will tell. Yeah, right? time will tell. And then also um, TJ Dillashaw, he just had that super fight against Henry Cejudo. Yeah. Um, do you think that the weight cut played a big factor in his performance? I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure it played a big factor. If you know, if you know, with it, you know, this thing starts. This thing has a different reaction. You know, if you saturate yourself too much and. Uh, 
You know, sure. I, it could get, you know, he says not, so I don't know. You know, and, and the fight was so quick. When you got a 31, 32 second fight, it's hard to tell. You know, did, did it, was his chin affected by it? We don't know. I mean, it, it could have been. He's been dropped in other fights at 135 before, so, you know, he's been, you know, he's been hurt before at, the, at both weights. But to me, I think it did. I think it did a little bit, and I think that he's really disappointed and that he couldn't, couldn't have at least finished really on his back you know what i mean and i get that i i, I get what i get he uh he wanted uh you know he wanted to be stopped properly if he's going to be stopped but um you know we don't know how that would have went and it's neither here nor there but i guess he'll find out if that's a weight class he wants to stay in or move on up back to his uh his title do you agree with that stopping um, you know what? It's it, it's one of those situations that you know the ref really has the best feel what's going on in there. I you've seen guys being that hurt and, and coming back around and finishing the fight, maybe even coming back and winning the fight. So you've seen it go both ways. So it's hard to say. You know, um, if it was my fighter, I would be. You know, I might be complaining that I was stopped too early, but yeah, maybe maybe not. You know, it, the ref has the best best view of what's going on there. He feel he feels what's going on there as well. So. Yeah, it did did TJ look legitimately hurt? He did. He looked hurt, and he looked like he was getting hurt by by everything that was touching him from the point that he was at. But he's also a tremendous athlete. He's in tremendous shape, and he has a champion's heart. So could have he turned it around? I I believe TJ Dillashaw could tur could have turned it around. But again, that would that that that's my that's not my job. You know, yeah. I J. Sure, it was a fair it was a fair stoppage as well. Yeah. You know. Uh, I'll, I'll help you argue either point, you know, I, I, I will, but you know, because it, you understand why it stopped and you understand why he wish it wasn't. So it is what it is. At 135, if their rematch um, is in bantamweight, how do you see that fight playing out? Yeah, it's hard to say. We only got to see 30 seconds, yeah. you know, so it's, it's, it's tough, you know, and and you know, I don't know either one of these guys that well. I know TJ fairly well. He does pop in here periodically. We get a little, we get some mitts in and stuff. But uh, you know, it's hard to say. You know, I, I TJ's a tremendous athlete. You know, I, he can be any of those guys. And you know, they're both the same type of spirit. They're both the same type of animal. They're both champions. You know, they both have the ability to beat each other on any any given night you know so it's just i guess how the preparation goes and and how each other feels the night of the fight really yeah now lastly um you're always so busy always so many fighters you're training uh what's next for you uh, yeah i got so we had jalen turner's been been training here he's fighting out in australia uh in a in, in a couple weeks i might i'm not gonna be able to make it out there for it um i got some family obligations but um yeah, just pull it, just plug it away. I wouldn't mind, you know, just kind of resting a little bit. Yeah, you deserve no. it. No, no, I would like to rest a little bit, but yeah, because <clears throat> yeah, you get tired. You know, you got tired. You put a lot of energy into these fighters, and, it, and sometimes you get a little burnout on it. But uh, you know, I take a few days off, and I'm all right. But I just plug away. That's all my my plans are. Just keep plugging away and take whatever's coming uh, my way.